Vauvern Hong's time finally came to an end when law enforcement forcefully entered his shabby apartment above Pizzeria Milano in the predominantly immigrant Andalect district of Brussels. For close to two years, this rented property, nestled amidst African grocery stores and Arab eateries, had served as a sanctuary for Vietnamese migrants who had been trafficked across the globe and were awaiting transportation to Britain. Tragically, among the occupants was some of the 39 victims of the Essex lorry tragedy in October 2019. The horrifying fate they endured inside a refrigerated container garnered international attention, marking the highest death toll in the UK associated with illegal immigration in nearly 20 years. Remarkably, the involvement of a corrupt group of Irish lorry drivers caused another major organised criminal to be brought to justice in an incredible twist of fate. This is the untold story of the underworld figures involved in the build-up to this tragic event. You are watching OCG TV. We would like to take a moment to thank all our audience for their continued support. We have built the channel to an incredible 54,000 subscribers at the time of this video. We kindly request that if you enjoy our content, give this video a like or subscribe to the channel. Now, let's begin the first chapter. Chapter 1. The Irish Connection In the early hours of October 23, 2019, Morris Robinson, a truck driver, unsealed a container he had recently collected from Perfleet docks on the Thames. Contained within the trailer were the motionless corpses of 28 Vietnamese males, 3 adolescent boys and 8 females. Robinson had been paid £25,000 in cash to pick up the container and had been instructed by his boss, fellow Irishman Ronan Hughes, to open the lorry trailer to give the migrants air shortly after collecting it from Perfleet Dock. Hughes had messaged him via the app Snapchat to say, give them air quickly, don't let them out. Robinson gave a thumbs up in reply. When Robinson stopped on a nearby industrial estate, he found that the migrants were all dead. He waited 20 minutes before calling emergency services. A cloud of steam that emerged from the trailer when it was opened and caught on CCTV spoke volumes of the heat that was still inside. Tragically, they had suffocated due to the scorching temperatures reaching up to 38 degrees Celsius during their journey on a ferry from the Belgian port of Zeebrugge. In a desperate attempt to escape, some had resorted to clawing at the container leaving behind harrowing bloodstains on the interior panels. Robinson and Hughes were part of a small circle of Irishmen involved in smuggling contraband across Europe. The driver of the lorry that came from the port of Zeebrugge was fellow countryman Eamon Harrison. Harrison denied knowing that there were migrants on board on that trip and two previous successful trips. Harrison had parked his cab in Bierne in northern France on the morning of October 22nd. He explained that Ronan Hughes had told him that instead of pallets of Coca-Cola, he would be collecting a load of stolen goods. He then claimed he was advised to drive to a remote spot where he met an Eastern European man who spoke poor English, indicated to him using sign language that he should close the curtains and take a short nap in his cab while a load of stolen goods was inserted into his trailer. Harrison then drove the trailer to the port of Zeebrugge where the container was loaded on board a boat to the UK. By the time Morris Robinson had picked it up on the other end, 39 migrants had died inside. Harrison explained that he had agreed to help transport stolen goods for Hughes because he owed him a considerable amount of money after a drink driving accident, which wrote off a lorry and a tractor, destroying a shipment of Danish bacon and costing Hughes almost 50,000 euros. Ronan Hughes had a chequered past and a history of involvement in illegitimate transport. He was jailed for two and a half years in 2009 after he was stopped going to Dover from France with 1,180 boxes of cigarettes worth £6 million hidden inside pallets of fruit. Hughes had bought the container from Irish haulier Thomas Marr. It had been registered in Bulgaria in the eastern city of Varna. However, the truck had not been on Bulgarian soil since the day after it was first registered in 2017. When investigators ran checks on the lorry used in the trafficking of the perished migrants, 
they found it was registered to a Thomas Marr. Incredibly, Ronan Hughes had not registered the vehicle in his own name yet. The NCA came calling on him. Investigators established he had played no part in the migrant conspiracy, but they became increasingly aware of his own criminal operations and set out to disrupt his activities and seize his wealth. Ma allegedly planned to then have trucker Hughes stabbed or severely beaten in jail, as evidenced by messages intercepted during the EncroChat hack. He circulated a message to a contact. Have you anyone in Belmarsh? One of the contacts replied, I'll ask, what's up? I want to get a fella seen. He was then asked, seen hurt, you mean? Yes, cheers, mate. I don't want gone, but want hurt. See what you think. The police suspected this meant Ma didn't want Hughes murdered, just wounded, although Ma later disputed that the messages implied any intention to cause harm. The text exchange continued with Ma being told his request would be sorted and being asked if he wanted Hughes to know where it came from. Yeah, Ma replied, for dragging me into this mess. The NCA considered these messages represented a threat to life and moved to protect Hughes. Ma was also using his transport services for illegal purposes, becoming a freelancer in the European drug trafficking scene. He had made the fatal mistake of selling his vehicle to someone who also wanted to take advantage of Bulgaria's prominent geographical location, cheap vehicle licenses and lax governmental regulation. Ma was eventually sent to prison for 14 years and 8 months in 2020. This corrupt group of Irish lorry drivers were not the masterminds behind the whole smuggling operation. You didn't need to travel far to find those that were, however. Chapter 2 – Fear in Flanders Approximately eight months prior to the fatalities, authorities in Flanders, the Flemish-speaking region of Belgium, had begun to suspect the presence of a human trafficking syndicate operating within their jurisdiction. In March 2019, they apprehended a taxi driver en route from Paris to Brussels who had three Vietnamese passengers in the rear of the vehicle. Subsequently, they intercepted another vehicle carrying eight Vietnamese migrants without proper documentation. A Vietnamese man accompanying them informed the police that he was assisting his fellow countrymen in reaching Britain. Upon examining the subject's tablet computer and mobile device, investigators discovered screenshots of Western Union transfers originating from the UK, photographs of truck registration plates and a series of dubious phone numbers associated with English, Belgian and Vietnamese contacts. Although migrants reached Europe by various routes, investigators found that an option used by some of the Essex victims involved flying from Vietnam to Moscow. They would later cross into Belarus or Ukraine and then be driven from Poland or the Czech Republic to Germany. Most of Hong's clients would end up at the Dong Xuan Center in Berlin, a giant Asian-themed indoor market nicknamed Little Hanoi. Employing about 2,000 people and serving as a hub for the city's Vietnamese community, as well as a tourist draw, the site allowed new arrivals to the West to blend in easily. Some would stay in Germany to work illegally in the restaurant sector or selling counterfeit goods, but most had their sights set on the UK. They were made to sleep on the floor, fed a meagre diet of watery noodles, and discouraged from leaving the premises after handing over their identity papers to Hong's associates. One migrant, prosecutors discovered, had been held in one of the flats for six months because he had run out of funds to complete his journey to the UK. On October 11, 2019, less than a fortnight before the Essex tragedy, two of the youngest victims, Tran Nok Hu, 17, and Din Din Tai Quen, 18, arrived by taxi at the Gespstraat safe house. The teenagers had previously been intercepted as they tried to reach Britain in the back of a lorry from the Netherlands and had decided to try once more after fleeing an asylum centre for minors near Maastricht. One of Hong's lieutenants had been sent to collect them from across the Belgian border and bring them to Anderlecht. Their taxi, however, was followed by Dutch police who told the Belgian authorities. A report was filed via Europol, but it seems local law enforcement agencies in Brussels decided there was insufficient evidence to act. Upon examining the suspect's tablet, computer and mobile device, 
It was discovered that there were screenshots of Western Union transfers originating from the UK, photographs of lorry registration plates, and a collection of suspicious phone numbers from England, Belgium, and Vietnam. Some of these numbers appeared frequently, leading prosecutors to initiate a broader inquiry that included call tracking and bank account monitoring. The investigation was just beginning to uncover the activities of Hong's criminal organization, but it was not until British authorities launched a murder probe into the Essex deaths that they were able to focus on the key figure. By analyzing data from mobile phones found in the Perfleet container and sharing it with Belgian officials, Investigators were able to track the victims' movements by their proximity to cell towers, starting in Bien, a town in France near Dunkirk, where they had entered Harrison's trailer. Investigators soon discovered that a significant number of the victims' phones had previously been active in the Andelect area of Brussels, with SIM cards purchased in that district. The phone numbers called by the victims from Essex also led back to Hong's gang, prompting the authorization of a tapping operation. In the subsequent weeks, the focus on the Belgian investigation shifted to two specific priorities. The first was a second-floor flat above Pizzeria Milano on the bustling Nino Sestenweg Street. The second property was an apartment located about a 10-minute walk away on Gespstraat, a tranquil residential street close to a square dedicated to Belgium's Veterans Colano. Surveillance efforts revealed frequent visits by a middle-aged Vietnamese man wearing white trainers with red stripes and carrying a black bag over his shoulder. The authorities were closing in on Hong. These two addresses were identified as rented safe houses where illegal Vietnamese migrants were kept before being secretly transferred to the UK. On the morning of October 22, 2019, Three taxis hired by Hong's gang left Brussels for Bien to meet Harrison and his trailer. It has now emerged that one of the taxis arrived late, meaning that two Vietnamese women and an Albanian man escaped with their lives after missing the pickup. Others who would climb into Harrison's lorry had come from separate safe houses in Paris, controlled by another gang. Less than 12 hours later, they were all dead. On hearing the news, Hong and his deputies fled to Germany to lie low. It was probably greed that lured him and at least one of his lieutenants, Nyong Long, 41, back to Brussels to continue their lucrative business. When police arrested Hong on May 26, 2020, they discovered the passports of three Vietnamese teenagers who had been caught in the back of a lorry at Coquel near Calais in December 2018. The driver on that occasion was Eamon Harrison. The evidence showed for the first time a direct link between Hong and the Irish Ring. Chapter 3 Justice is Done Vo Van Hong was so ruthless that he was caught on tapped phone calls describing his clients as chickens and is said to have sent one of his own cousins to their death in the fatal smuggle into the UK. Remarkably, investigators still do not know his true identity and his fingerprints match no records in Vietnam. Hong is thought to be one of two aliases. The other is Hoang Van Tong, that he has used since arriving illegally into Belgium four years ago. Belgian prosecutors accused Hong of arranging at least 37 smuggling runs to the UK between the summer of 2018 and his arrest almost two years later. Although the reality is that there were likely many, many more. Van Hong was eventually jailed for 15 years by a court in Brussels in 2019. He was also ordered to pay a 920,000 euro fine. However, incredibly, Van Hong successfully appealed his sentence in a court in Ghent a year later and had it reduced by five years. In a 234-page verdict, Judge Bert Salambier wrote that Vaux was indisputably the leader of the Belgian cell of the criminal organization. The Bruges court convicted 11 other people from Vietnam or of Vietnamese origin for allowing their property to be used as a meeting point where documents or mobile phone SIM cards for the victims were distributed. Six taxi drivers who took migrants largely from Brussels to meeting points were also convicted, including their leader, a Moroccan man who the court heard continued these activities even after the events of October 2019. He was given a seven-year prison sentence. 
The convictions in Belgium, where the smuggling network had been based, followed that of Eamon Harrison, 23, the lorry driver from Northern Ireland, and Georg Nika, 43, the Romanian coordinator of the operation, who were found guilty of manslaughter at the Old Bailey in London in December 2020. They were sentenced to 20 and 27 years in prison, respectively. Morris Robinson, 26, was given 13 years and four months, having collected the trailer and opened it in an industrial estate to find the migrant's dad. Ronan Hughes was jailed for 20 years after admitting manslaughter. He was also ordered to pay the families of the victims more than £180,000. At the Old Bailey, Judge Mark Lucraft, KC, said the penalty for defaulting on the order was two years in prison. The court heard available assets included cash, bank accounts, the value of the lorries, including the one in which the victims died, and Hughes's share of a property in Ireland. Three other members of the people smuggling gang were also sentenced for conspiracy to facilitate unlawful immigration. Christopher Kennedy, 24 from County Armagh, was jailed for seven years. Valentin Colotta, 38 of Birmingham, for four and a half years, and Alexandru Ovidiu Hanger, 28 of Hobart Road, Tilbury, Essex, was given a three-year sentence. Despite the significant sentences handed out, there is still such a bitter reality that remains. Hong's notorious operation may have ended, but there appears to be no shortage of others willing to take over his mantle. For the families, no level of justice dished out to the perpetrators will ever bring back their loved ones. Thanks for watching.